if you're going to have a tuner, there's nothing wrong with having a, a legal binding contract that spells out what they're going to do and who owns this data. Because I've seen this all before. These some of these tuners, you know, they come in, they get a bad attitude, something goes wrong, and then it's like, well, that's my data. That was my knowledge, my data, my information. So you don't, you can't have it. Well, bullshit. Hey, everybody, it's Tim McCamus back out in the shop tonight uh, doing a few more videos. I want to take a minute to talk to you about data. This is something that's probably long overdue and, and we see this all the time and it's, uh, it's something that everybody uh, seems to uh, not put much effort into, but the data that these cars produce is, uh, it's valuable. It's very valuable, especially to the car owner, driver, whatever you are. But uh, I don't think much consideration is given to having the proper equipment to keep and store the data on and also to analyze it. Um, you know, over the years, it's just, you know, a lot of guys would have uh, an old laptop or something that they might not use anymore and they were using that for their race car data, but that's really not sufficient today. And, and you need to have um, a good source of equipment in your trailer to maintain all this data that these cars produce. And um, that that requires some investment in hardware. I mean, these cars are you know they're very expensive to build, and and it really doesn't cost that much to provide a data system that will you know that you can store all this stuff in the the equipment to store the data on. There's lots of options for that, and and you can't just count on the hard drive of the PC to store the data on because uh, if that uh, hard drive gets corrupted, uh, your data is gone, and you can lose you know, hundreds and hundreds of runs and thousands of bits of data that you've acquired over time. So, you know, you really need to think about how you, um, how you pull that data out of the car after the run and how you handle that data after that. Meaning that, um, you know, you can store it on the, on the hard drive, on the computer, but there needs to be some redundancy here. And that means that, uh, and there are lots of options for this, um, you know, simple versions like um, storing it on a thumb drive and just, you know, manually transferring the files off of your computer onto a thumb drive. Thumb drives are really cheap. Now you can buy large ones for nothing. You know, they don't cost anything. And that would, that would give you a secondary backup. Um, but there's also a lot more sophisticated versions. I mean, you can, you can buy large um, removable drives now that would... Uh, um, stay plugged in to a USB port on the PC and they can be set to backup data every time you input it. So you can set that up uh, easily to back up the data every time you load a new file or every so many hours or minutes or our days or however long you want it uh, intervals in to be. But you need to store that and uh, you know you can you can go to the removable hard drive or you can go to a um, like a NAS drive, which is something that's a little bigger and more sophisticated and more um, options. There are a lot more options to schedule the, how the, the data is backed up. But you need to protect that, that data at, with multiple backups, meaning that um, don't just have it on the hard drive, don't just have it on a thumb drive. I mean, back this stuff up, have, have two or three backups of your data and check it every once in a while. Don't just assume that it's working okay. Um, there, there are lots of nice, um, there's, not, there's a lot of cloud-based stuff that is um, uh, very easy to set up. Um, Dropbox is a perfect example of something that's easy to use. And, and as long as you've got connection, you've got an internet connection, you can back that stuff up. And anymore, it's not hard to get a decent internet connection through uh, cellular, over Wi-Fi, or, or multiple types of connections you can have in your trailer and back it up to Dropbox. And the nice thing about Dropbox is once you put it in the cloud, um, you can access that from any PC anywhere. So you can log into your computer at your work on Monday morning and pull up your Dropbox account and pull up all the files for the runs over the weekend. And there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of, of cloud-based versions. So it's, it's not a bad idea to have the information on the hard drive plus two stationary backups plus a cloud-based backup. So you can't have it backed up enough. And 
you need to maintenance it. You need to look at that stuff and don't let it get all cluttered up. Look at it, you know, after each event or during the event and make sure that it's working properly so that that data is backed up. That way, if, if there's problems, if your laptop gets stolen or, or something gets corrupted in your computer, all you've got to do is um, install another computer and, and download the data back to it. So storing it on the, on the C drive or the hard drive of the computer is absolutely the worst place to put it. I mean, it shouldn't really be there under any circumstances. It should be elsewhere. You don't even have to keep it on the hard drive of the computer. You can immediately put it to an outside source. But that's something that needs to be addressed, and we see it all the time. Guys will have problems and lose years of, of runs and data that they've acquired and, and log books and everything else that they have um, just because they didn't do a proper backup. And another thing that we really need to talk about is, you know, these cars today, they're getting so sophisticated that um, it, a lot of times it's hard to, it's hard to tune these things by, you know, yourself because they are so sophisticated. They have very complicated programs. If they're, um, you know, everything now has EFI on it and it has boost controllers and everything under the sun is on there. So they're, to be really competitive, you, you know, somebody's got to kind of specialize in that and you may be um, either hiring or, or using a, a so-called tuner, you know, one of these guys that uh, will come in and either works for you full time or, or comes in just for the weekend and helps you tune your car and um, helps you analyze all the data to get your performance picked up. And, uh, you know, just like auto mechanics, tuners are the same way. There's good ones, there's mediocre ones, there's great ones, there's bad ones, there's everything in between. But no matter what, who you pick or what you use for a tuner or how good or bad they are, the data is yours. It's you own that data. You, the car owner owns that data. One of the biggest mistakes that I see is somebody hires a tuner to come in and set up their car and set up their fuel injection and get all the thing, you know, works with them for several races and gets the car worked out. And either they leave with all the data or they take it without you knowing it or, um, you know, personalities clash and three races in, the guy's an asshole and you're like, get the fuck out of my trailer. He takes the, his laptop with all your runs and all your data on it and you go in and look at your computer and there's nothing. So he hasn't been keeping anything on your computer. He's skated out of there with all your shit and now you're sitting there with nothing. Okay, so it's okay to, to hire a tuner, to find somebody to help you, uh, even if you're not paying them, even if they're doing it, um, just they wanna, they wanna go racing, so they wanna help you with the car. You have to protect that data. That data's not theirs, it's yours. So keep track of it and don't assume that they're keeping it all on your computer and keeping it backed up. That's your responsibility. If you don't pay attention to it, if you're out there eating a cheeseburger every time this guy's in there looking at the runs and he's using his laptop or he's downloading it to an off-site backup and not giving you any access to it, that's a fucking problem, all right? So if you're gonna have a tuner, and especially if you're paying for one, because some of these guys get some big dough to do this shit, there's nothing wrong with having a, a contract, a, a legal binding contract that spells out what they're going to do and who owns this data because I have seen this time and time again when these relationships you know it's kind of like a it's kind of like having a new girlfriend you know the first couple of dates everything's all good and everybody's all happy and and things are are looking good but then three or four races in you start to see the real person and you're going hey this guy's a prick I don't want him around and so you're like hit the road and he takes all your shit. So you need to have some recourse on this. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if the, if the guy's legit and uh, is not gonna be an asshole and take all your stuff, then he shouldn't have any problem signing a one or two page agreement that at least is upfront that everybody knows who's got what. Because no matter what, because I've seen this all before, these, 
some of these tuners, you know, they come in, they get a bad attitude, something goes wrong, and then it's like, well, that's my data. That was my knowledge, my data, my information. So you don't, you can't have it. Well, bullshit. Okay, don't get any type of agreement like that. The the easiest way to sort this out is to be up front, talk about it in the beginning, not later on, and not when you start to have some kind of second questions about what this guy's actually doing or how he's acting or you see something that doesn't look quite right, that ain't the time to be figuring this shit out, okay? So do it up front and don't be afraid to say, hey, here's the deal, okay? This is my data and I want you to know that I own this data and this is where I want it backed up, but it's still your responsibility to go in and check that. Check it at the end of each day, you know? Don't let yourself go three, four, five races a whole season and find out you don't have dick on your computer. You got nothing, okay? This guy's on to the next guy, took all your shit, all the stuff you paid for to help him learn this, and now he's taking it over here to Joe Blow and is giving him all that data that you paid for. You got nothing, okay? So nothing wrong with having an agreement. You know, this. I see this all the time. You see these guys that, that put these racing operations together. They, got, they own these big companies. They, they got, you know, some cash there, and they run these huge organizations. And it comes to the race car, it's just like a fucking free-for-all. You know, there's no organization to it. There's no, there's no structure. And then pretty soon, this tuner didn't work out. Data's all gone, starting from scratch again. So protect your data. Protect it. it it's important. It's, a, it's as valuable as anything else on the car. It's probably more valuable than the 90% of the car. You can replace all that shit, but that data is hard to replace and it's hard to rebuild especially if you got several years of it and and you guys know if you go out testing it's expensive it's expensive to go test and put runs on the car every time you run that car it's dollars it costs a lot of money to do that so if you're not getting that data not saving it not having access to it then you're just getting screwed so pay attention to that and if you're in the middle of one of these situations sit down and talk it out okay everybody needs to to ball up here and be able to talk about this and say okay here's what I here's what I'm seeing here let's get this worked out so I see this all the time it's like oh wow I can't even really go talk to this guy because he's gonna he's gonna blow up or he's got a you know he's got a shitty attitude or he's you know he's a hothead or something like that well if that's the case I don't care how good the guy is if he's a jackass you don't need to be around him anyway so work all this out in advance save yourself some headaches Use it like a business transaction. It's just, this is what it is. You know, this is expensive hobby and you need to protect this stuff. Think about what I'm saying. Think about these backups. I mean, any IT guy can set this up. You don't have to set it up yourself. You don't have to know anything about computers. Have your IT guy set all this shit up and show you how to use it. Dropbox is easy. You download it. If you stay within their minimum requirements of data, you don't even, it's a free service. Uh, if you want to pay for it, it's nothing. You know, it's cheap. So um, think about how you're handling this stuff. Think about your data, where it's stored. Can you access it at any time? Um, double check the entries, double check that it's backing up and make sure that the stuff is protected. So think about what I'm saying. Done for the day, I'll talk to you later.